Well, hello there and welcome to Off Air with Chris and Kwan and Casey Getz, episode number three. We're back once again and we're sponsored by nobody, no but we're still taking offers of, on the offer, I should say. If anyone has an offer, we'll gladly listen on off air. All right, Kristen, let's recap the weekend. How's your weekend? What was what's new? Yeah, it was a great weekend. Just really relaxed, okay. you know. Um, me and Riley, my four year old, we went to the park and rode her scooter around. Um, well, she did the riding, and I watched. And uh, so, yeah, it was nice. It was awesome. it was a a beautiful weekend. It's starting to feel like fall. The weather was fantastic, especially Sunday. Was just not a cloud in the sky. Uh, I played in a golf tournament this weekend, uh, the Kirk Nairn Memorial Golf Tournament at Glen Rokey Country Club. Uh, Kirk was a student at Abingdon, tragically passed away in a car accident the night before his graduation. But his parents had put a golf tournament together to raise money to give to scholar for scholarships to students at Abingdon High School ever since he passed away. And it is, I think, the biggest tournament in the area. They have three different shotgun starts, one on Saturday, two on Sunday. It is just incredible to support that community and has put in for that and all the number of kids over the five years that have gotten scholarships. I think his mother told me it was like 45 students have received scholarships so far. We got to play in that, but on the golf course, there was something I never had ever seen before. It was really cool. They had a, a guy, it was from Charlotte, North Carolina. He was there. I think it was called, I forget what the exact name of it, but it was a giant like gun. You could shoot, you put your golf ball in with air compressor. You could shoot your golf ball on the one hole on a bar five. And it was like 385, 400 yards in the air. The golf ball traveled. It was amazing. This guy was out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, something I'd never seen before in all my years golfing. Why would you need to do that? It was like a, it was just, I don't know. It was like a, a, a unique thing that he does. I mean, it's, it's, boy, boy, you get way closer. I yeah. mean, if you hit a drive, yeah, it's like maybe point. 240 yards, maybe. This guy, you know, is a par five. We were right beside the green with our, our team. All four of us got to put a golf ball in this thing. He would help us set it up, and then we could pull the trigger, and the air, all the compressed air gets underneath the ball, and it shoots it out low, and then it rises, and it was it was awesome. And all afternoon, you just hear it go pop, pop, pop all over the golf course. <laughs> uh, but it, it was really cool, something I think, I've never experienced. I think before. I could golf if that's the way um, – I did it was just, you know, put the ball in the gun and shoot it and, and shoot it and then maybe have to putt a little. I, he, could, I could do that. And you think a lot more people would be interested in golf. If that I, was I like, mean, yeah. it's an option, okay. you know, I don't well, know. Well, you know what? Again, he is out of North Carolina. He travels around the tournaments. Uh, he said within a couple hour radius, but he was up there this past weekend at Glen Rokey. I think uh, we'll maybe show a video. I did take a couple of videos of other guys I was playing with shooting the, their ball out of, out of the, the gun there. So we'll throw at uh, Ethan, our wonderful producer, put that in here to, to show what it looks like. But it's quite the contraption. Pretty neat. Like to hear it. Also, I have a philosophical question. So okay. Sunday evening, I came home, had a little bit of a late dinner, and oh, no. we had a piece of cheesecake from the night before we had got out. And... Uh, Kelly, my wife, she ate half of it and left me half. That's very sweet of her. Yes, I, I agreed. And I, I was thanking her because I, I wouldn't have blamed her if she ate the whole thing, but she didn't. But what's your philosophy? or uh, Is that like ultimate true love right there? Or like if you get a piece of cake, a cheesecake, are you eating it all? Or are you going to save some for your significant other? Um, okay, so my philosophy is now you've been married how many months now? Uh, three. Okay. Yep. And I've been married about six now. So my, years. Yeah. Six yeah, years. Yeah. Me three months. So, yeah, yeah. Three months, yeah. six years now. So my philosophy is when you go and you get cheesecake, you should buy another slice for your significant other. That way you can eat okay. your slice All and right. then they get their own slice to themselves. Okay. There you go. But in terms of if there's because just how one. Happy would she, how happy would she be yeah. if, if you came home or, you know, you came home from somewhere and you're like, I bought you this, a whole slice to yourself for you to enjoy. Rather than us having to share one. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Well, that's true for that. I'll take the advice. Again, I'm new to this uh, <laughs> this marriage game here, relatively speaking. So, uh, but yeah, I was like, well, I think that's a sign of true love right there. She Because I wasn't home when she ate her half. So, I mean, she could have eaten the whole thing. I mean, I knew it was in the fridge, but like I wasn't there to be like, hey, I want some of that. So, the fact that she left it for me. Without me being there, I That's was like, really sweet, that though. was, yeah. That I enjoyed the job, second Kelly. half of it that night as well. But again, what if the rules it, are reversed? If you 
if you had a piece of cheesecake in your fridge and you mm -hmm. were there, your husband was not, you eating the whole thing, half of it? Well, this is where I get a little bit lucky. Okay. Um, so Kegan, my husband, he's not a big sweets person. Ah, okay. He's not, not a big dessert person. Uh, more a, a steak and potatoes kind of guy. Okay. But um, occasionally he'll have sweets and, you know, like on Christmas and like Thanksgiving and stuff. But he doesn't like want a sweet treat like I would say I do. So I feel like I could probably get away with eating the whole piece and he would never care. But, I mean, would you have known that the full piece of cheesecake was there if she had ate the, eaten the whole thing? Yes, because I brought it home the night before. Oh, I see. You yes. brought it home. So I okay. knew it was there, but we didn't have it the night I brought it home. Either one of us, it was in the fridge. And the next day when I came home that night and it was half of it in there, I was like, hey, I still could have a piece of cheesecake. Speaking of food, last week mm -hmm. you got to fill in for Dave Dirks, our Friday Night Rivals Food City tailgate. Yeah. That Dave typically does when he was off last week. And you're kind of his pitch hitter when Dave mm -hmm. is out the last year. Last year you did it this year. What is it like? I'm QB two. Getting to go through that process of getting to eat food on television for the day. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I mean, it is fun. We have a lot of we have a great time out there, and it is fun to sample things that like you might not normally um, try otherwise. Like there's definitely things that we've had at the tailgates. That I'm like, if I had went into the store, probably wouldn't have bought that just because I didn't know, but now I like it. So like that part is really fun, but it's also just fun. We just have a good time. You know, like, I think that comes across too. Like we just, I, it, it's fun to do. Um, however, you are stuffed by the end of it. You know, I'm eating like one little bite of everything. Cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, how am I going to be try all of this and eat all of this? So the goal is to, you know, come hungry. So that way you can um, eat a little bit more. Because so you eat three it. different times in an hour and a half, the five, five thirty, six o'clock news. Right. You're trying something different each half hour. Exactly. So it's kind of like you have to save room for later on and you don't want the food to go to waste. So like, no. you know, I took one bite of my biscuit. We had sausage biscuits this week. Um, and so I took one bite of my biscuit and then, off camera, I was like, well, I got to finish this. You know, I don't want it to go to waste and no one's going to eat my half eaten biscuit. So, no, but, and yeah. this week you also were wearing a little bit of your, I was as well I was at yes. five 30 when I was with you over there wings that which were messy. And I was, I, mean, I was a little like hesitant. I'm like wings are messy on live television, but we both had one. I just dug in, you know, yeah. you just got to do what you got to do. And me being a good podcast co-host because mm -hmm. I, I got the napkin and told you to, Hey, you got something right yeah. there. Thank you for that. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, you know, um, Dave, I'm sure will be off another game at some point in the in the future, and I'll be ready to go for the next one. Well, we always love when we get to see you at the Friday Night Rivals. Uh, when you. Dave Thank can't you. make it, that you that you were there. So. Maybe Dave and I should do it, both do it one day. Hey, you There's never something. you never know. Also coming up, I know you wanted to touch on a big event happening in Bristol yes. this weekend. So Rhythm excited. and Roots. Yes love rhythm and roots every year it's so exciting and i just think it's fun for bristol there's so many people that are will be downtown um do you think a little rain is in the forecast but hopefully that won't deter anyone from coming out and hopefully they'll have a big turnout but what i'm really excited about is as you know our station is like the you can just walk out the yes. back door here and you're you're there you're in rhythm and roots my favorite thing is on fridays which i know you'll be at the game but Island noodles will be back. I love Island noodles. The, Have you tried it yet? No. I mean, the people at our TV station talk about Island noodles. Like if it's the last meal you're ever going to have, I bet you we would have five to seven people in this newsroom that would say Island noodles. Yes. Yes. It's unbelievable how many people I've never had it. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. And it's usually right out back of our yep. building. It's right there. Yeah. So it's simple to go. So normally I try to get there early because they do usually sell out every year too. So got to get the Island noodles. And I also am smart and um, have keep my lemonade cup in my desk <laughs> year to year. So I've had the same lemonade cup since probably like 2014. And um, obviously refills. I wash it out. It's not free refills. Uh, it's okay. $3 or $3.99 or something. It might be even a little bit more now, yeah. but if you bring the cup, they'll fill it up for you for the whatever price. Yeah. So keep the cup in my desk. So I'll be having Island noodles and a little lemonade. 
and obviously with it in downtown Bristol and our, our parking lot, our station is in downtown Bristol. The one negative, it is a nightmare for us getting in and out of the parking lot for those couple of days with rhythm and roots. But what I am so back when I used to work on the weekend several years ago, like on Sunday night, when the, the city crews are tearing everything down, they are so fast. Yes. turning everything back where it's like Monday morning, you would have no idea there was a it's festival, insane. how quickly, I mean, it's Sunday night. They're already breaking things down. It is amazing how quickly, I mean, even today, you know, like in the bank parking lot right across from us, they got one of the fences up here. So some of the fencing is going up uh, when, I mean, we're taping this on a Wednesday evening this week, but it's amazing how quickly, I mean, it takes a few days to the setup, but the teardown okay. is like that. And so you don't even know it was here. It's incredible. Hats off to the city workers because yes. they get that done quick. And, you know, obviously, depending on where you live, there's a lot of different ways to get to the station. You go down State Street, MLK, you're coming underneath the Bristol sign or on the Virginia side. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's probably about six or seven different ways you can get to our station. But during Rhythm and Roots, there's one way in, there's one way out. So, yeah. I mean, everyone that... Every year when we have new people that come here, we're like, hey, like it's like drawing a map. Like, okay, this, <laughs> this is how you have to go. Right. And people that haven't been through Rhythm and Roots yet who work here. And we have probably a couple of three or four people that this will be their first yeah. Rhythm and Roots. And, and so we'll have to be getting the map out and be like, okay, this house is how you normally come to work. You can't do that this way. You have to go up, up and around or you, however you need to get into the parking lot. But there's one way in, one way out of our parking lot for uh, three days. Yep. So it'll be... It'll be another crazy couple of days, but exciting. And you mentioned, yes, I, Rhythm and Roots for the last, I never really get to go on Friday night. We're always mm -hmm. high school football, but now with Friday Night Rivals, and we're going to be at Honeacre on Friday night, first time ever. So it'll be really exciting to be up there. They're playing Rye Cove. So looking forward to being up at Honeacre for the first time on Friday. You could watch that game on WCYB. Uh, so I know you'll be... Probably, you know, probably at Rhythm and Roots. Roots. So yes. if you are going to the festival, make sure you come find me and say hi, because I'll be out there. A non-music event in Bristol, but in Johnson City, there's a big event happening on Saturday. ETSU football yeah. hosting the That's number right. two team in the country, North Dakota State. It's arguably, I don't think it's arguably, I think it is the biggest football game that has ever been played at Green Stadium, I guess there was a playoff game a few years ago, so certainly that was more on the line. But just uh, having the number two team in the country, perennial powerhouse, North Dakota State, coming to Johnson City. So we're going to have like a, a new slot. We're going to have a little tailgate out in Lot 21. So if you are going to the ETSU game, make sure you stop by Lot 21. Uh, there's going to be several of us out there hours before the game to, to meet with fans and whatnot, maybe have some food, of course. So we, we will certainly be out there as well. So there, there's something else going on, a lot going on every weekend, but those are the two maybe big things, Rhythm and Roots and then, you know, the big ETSU football game against North Dakota State. That's a 5.30 kickoff in uh, Johnson City on Saturday evening. Yeah, and you'll be out there. I will, yes. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Haven't gotten to see since I moved out of sports. Uh I don't think I went to an ETSU football game last year. I, the two years ago I did, but I, this will be the first, you know, football game I've been to in two years for ETSU. So I'm looking forward to yeah. checking out the Bucks. Uh, you know, Trey Lamb, first year head coach, so it's a brand new team from what they had last year. So looking forward to checking out ETSU and seeing Bucks. North Dakota State as well. Obviously, one of the best teams. So now we're on the subject of sports. We might as well check some receipts. Got that right. Sure. Check some receipts. Last week in college, Kristen, another win. Mm -hmm. She took Texas to beat Michigan by more than seven and a half points, and they won by 18. I think they killed Michigan. So Kristen's 2-0 in her college picks. Off to a fantastic start. I got my first win last week. I took Nebraska to beat Colorado by more than six points. They did, and Nebraska won big. So on the season in college, Kristen's 2-0. I'm 1-1. So before we get to the NFL, we'll make our college picks for this week. And since okay. you're undefeated, I'm going to give you the floor to go first. Yes. So, of course, my dogs are playing this weekend. And they will <laughs> be playing. That's right. And yeah. they will be playing Kentucky. First SEC game for Georgia. Kentucky's already played an SEC game. They played South Carolina last week and got crushed by South Carolina. Right. So um, I'm going to go, of course, Georgia on top. Okay. Minus 23 and a half. Wow, so Kristen's taking Georgia to win by more than 23 points at Kentucky. That's a Saturday night game in Lexington. All right, so that is Kristen's pick. For the first time, I'm taking an underdog 
I have taken two favorites so far. I'm going to go. It's a battle of undefeated teams. I'm taking Boston College at Missouri. Of course, Boston oh, College okay. knocked off yeah. Florida State in the opener. Yep. Missouri is undefeated, highly ranked. They haven't really played anybody yet. Boston College is getting 16 points at Missouri. So I'm going to take Boston College plus 16 at Missouri. All right. We'll That's my that college goes. pick. As for the NFL, of course, last week was the opening week. Boo. We took the same game because we had to as my Steelers against Kristen's Falcons in Atlanta. The Falcons were favored by three and a half. The Steelers went outright in Atlanta, 18 to 10 Steelers. So I'm one to know NFL. Kristen is O and one. Kristen was very sad on Sunday. That is something that I did this weekend too, is I did watch. I didn't get to see any of the I game. the game. Well, it wasn't on here locally. No. Um, but I was also – golfing at that time, but I was following on the phone and it was a very close game back and forth, but uh, Steelers able to pull it out. Do you not have the ticket? The NFL no, ticket? I do you not. Know? That's I a lot of money. Like that's, yeah, that's a lot of money for the ticket. But even if I did, like I said, I, I was out golfing on Sunday afternoon anyway. Right. Uh, but yeah, I did not get to see that game. So maybe it's good luck, but I didn't get to watch them and the Steelers won. But you got to watch it. I did watch okay. it, yeah. What do you think and... of Kirk Cousins? First game is the Falcon. <sighs> Didn't do, didn't do too good. Didn't do too great. But um, as far as our NFL picks, you know, I'm, I'm still thinking that the Falcons, I think they're going to be fired up this week. I think that, you know, they were, they're sad about the loss and they're going to, they're sad about the loss and they're going to come back better. All right. So, so you, here we go. you're taking the yes. Falcons this week. So I am taking um, the Falcons play the Eagles Monday yeah, night. Monday night. And so I'm going to take the Falcons plus six and a half. Plus six and a half. Okay. I am also taking an underdog. I'm going to take the Minnesota Vikings. They are plus six at home against the San Francisco 49ers. All righty. So we're both taking a couple underdogs. What about that outfit at the U.S. Open tennis match that uh, Travis and <sighs> Thank you for bringing Taylor up. were Swift were at the U.S. Open, the men's final right. over the weekend. They were there because the Chiefs played on Thursday last week, so they had a few extra days off. So Mahomes was there as well with his yep. wife, and they were all in a little suite there at the U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. When you saw that, I mean, um, obviously, because no one knows they were going to be there until you, they show them, you know, walking in and stuff. They looked amazing, as always. Looked like they were having a great time. The the bucket hat was funny to me on Travis, but you know he rocks it. He's he he likes fashion. So, um, but she looked awesome and. You know, I like to wear a bucket hat when I golf sometimes. I get made fun of for wearing it, so I, I'm not – Well, uh, you need a Gucci bucket hat like Travis nah. Kelsey had at the U.S. Open. Mine's definitely not Gucci. But I here's – At least a Callaway. Here's what made me laugh about that whole thing, though, is, um, as you'll remember, a couple years ago, um, we went – you and Kelly and me and Kegan went to see Morgan Wallen when he was at Bristol Motor yes. Speedway. Yeah. And um, – For Country Thunder. Yes, yeah. and that was in October, yeah. and um, – there was a baseball game. The World Series. <laughs> yes, the World Series. Yes. Atlanta, your Atlanta and, Braves were in the World Series. And my husband was very upset yeah. about this because um, – We got the tickets months ago, so you had no idea the Braves were going to yeah, be in the World Series. We didn't know. Yeah. And, and your husband's a diehard Braves fan. Absolutely. And so the whole time during the concert, he had it on his phone – and like the and Morgan Wallen's like right here, and he's got his phone yeah. watching the World Series. Well, I remember in the back of your yes. sweatshirt. Yeah. At one point, he put it because it was standing. We were standing, and at one point, we were on like the floor level yeah. or whatever. One point, he put it in the back of my hoodie so he could watch the game. Yeah. Like again, Morgan Wallen is right there, but he's watching baseball. But what I thought was so funny at the U.S. Open is I don't know if you noticed this, but Travis had his phone out. I did like not. they're they're in silence watching the U.S. Open, and he's got his phone out watching football. Ah, okay. <laughs> so he had um, it was Sunday, okay. right? Yeah. Yes, so, it was. Yeah, he's watching so all the other NFL games. He was yeah. watching the other okay. NFL games. So you know they're just like us. They're you know just... we we ran into our own version of a local celebrity that night at that Morgan Wallen concert. You know who was right came over and was watching some of the game was um Gavin Cross. That's right. Yeah. At that, that point, cool. he was still at Virginia Tech, mm -hmm. and I told Kagan, I said. You know, because he was like, well, who is that? I'm like, oh, that's Gavin Cross. You know, he plays a tech. He's going to be a first-round draft pick. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, he's going to be a first-round pick. I didn't know he was going to be a top-10 pick, as it turned out, you know, like nine months later when he got drafted, because that was going into his final season. He played at Virginia Tech. But yeah, Gavin Cross came over and was watching it. He's a big Braves fan as well. So he was watching with us while we were kind of watching yeah. the baseball game, listening to Morgan Wallen. Yeah, yeah so um, 
Gavin, it was good to see you at the concert yeah, if you're yeah. watching our podcast. Yeah. Highly doubtful, but <laughs> and if you yeah. if you come back, maybe he'll be at the um the state line classic, you know. He could be. And, I mean, of course he'll be playing though. I mean, he's in the true. Kansas City Royals organization, double A. Yeah. Uh, you know, so obviously you would like to see him progress and you know, maybe be a triple A next year, eventually be in the in the major leagues. But anytime you want to come to a concert and watch a game off my hoodie. You're welcome to. He's done it once. I'm sure he, he would do it again. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's time for the final segment of the show where mm -hmm. it's ask us almost anything. And then we got a, tonight's question is from Anne coming from Bristol. All and right. her question is if you could have any job in the world and money was not a factor, what job would you do? What would you, what would you do as a job? Money's not a factor. Money's not a factor. So, like, you are working just for fun, for fun. and, like, you've got plenty of money and can okay. do whatever. Okay. But you have to work. But you have to work. You have to work. You can't just say, okay. like, you know, I'm going to lay on a beach. Yeah. Um, as I was going through this career, my kind of backup plan, or if I, I was like, well, if this doesn't work, what else would I want to do? And I always thought being a teacher and, like, a high school basketball coach would be cool. So, I think for me, I would say – probably be a, a teacher and coach, you know, at a high school. Um, and, and in terms of subject, I, I really always like history or social studies in school. So it may be like a history teacher and then like a basketball coach. That's pretty cool. That would be me. What about you? What about grade? Does it matter to you? Uh, probably high school. Yeah. I probably would say I'd want to do the high school because that way, like also you like some of the kids that are on your team, you can be in class, you know, team yeah. have them in class as well. I, I, I think I would that. be – a high school coach Casey now like I'm like for like a fantasy job where I don't think like being like an NFL general manager or like in the <laughs> front office of an NFL team I think yeah, that would be kind of right. cool to do but I think like for that obviously that would be like a very well-paying job you know but I mean if you're talking like that was not really something I ever thought about but like now as a sports fan I'm like well wow, that would be really cool but I think growing up teaching was always kind of like that would have been my second choice if I didn't have the passion to try and get into to television. Yeah. So I, I think you're right. Like you could answer that question in a number of different ways, because like when I was growing up, I wanted to be a country music singer. So yeah. if I could have any job, yeah. like that'd be pretty cool. Right. Yeah. I'd be a country music singer and whatnot. Um, but if we're being more realistic, um, I've always, always said that I would love to be a barista. Really? Yes. Big coffee fan, obviously. And um, I just love it. It's so fun. What about it? Like, what, what do you, I mean, like. I just love coffee. So okay. I just think it would be fun to just like work at a coffee shop. Make all the other like, kinds of drinks. Yeah. I mean, I, eventually I think it would be awesome to even own a coffee shop, okay. but I don't know if I could do all that. The, there's a lot of work with that. Yeah. <laughs> Owning a business. So, um, but I would love to just like make the coffees. I've always said that's going to be my retirement job, you know, is like if I don't have, if I didn't have to worry about money or whatever, I would just work at a little coffee shop and I'd make the coffees for everyone. Well, I'm glad you didn't go with that career path because if you did, I never would have known you because I don't drink coffee. I never would have ever met you because I never would have been going through a line at Kristen's barista or cafe, whatever you call it. <laughs> um, but so, yeah. Well, I can make you a tea. Okay. Yeah. A sweet tea, a sweet tea or yeah. green tea. Yeah. There we go. Okay. All right. Yeah. So to recap, we got rhythm and roots this weekend, mm -hmm. uh, big ETSU football game at home. So a lot going on. Enjoy yourself. Uh, enjoy the football this weekend. Got college NFL. We'll be talking NASCAR next week. Next week is race week in Bristol. So when we do next week's Ooh. podcast, we will maybe have to make our race picks as well as oh. we will both be out there. We will. Uh, on Saturday for the Dale, yeah yeah for the the big cup race it'll be an elimination race in the for the cup series playoffs next Saturday so yes next week's podcast may have a little NASCAR flavor when it comes to town it's a big couple of weeks here in Bristol with Rhythm and Roots and then NASCAR back to back weekends that's great for the local economy the hotels the businesses the restaurants it's a big two weeks for them so get out there and support your local businesses all the Absolutely. time but these weeks here are really what they kind of they depend on these weeks to get through oh, the, yeah. the times when there's not as many events going on definitely definitely and i will be doing that all right we'll see you guys next week